Hello, this is Roland. Welcome. This is number nine in a series of programs about how to start over again. How to shed the shackles of the past. Unhappy memories, bitterness, resentments, unfinished business, um, all of that. Okay, Just let it all go. And start again. Start afresh. But part of the reason why your life is not worked out, why it's messed up. See, some of you are successful. Uh, it, you know, you have a good job, you have nice things, maybe you have a nice house, you got money, you got friends, you know, all that stuff. Maybe you got a degree, went to a good school, all that kind of stuff, okay? But something is still missing. Okay? Something is still missing. All of those compensatory externals, okay, make for... Um, perhaps a pleasant life, but maybe not a pleasant life. Sometimes going to work in a large corporation, for example, can be, uh, can be awful. The intrigue, the gossip, the backstabbing, the politicking, the pettiness, see? But here's a clue to help you. If I'm describing you, here's a clue, that, a tremendous clue that will help you, or a clue that will help you tremendously. Don't resent the people. Don't resent your work. Don't resent your co-workers, your bosses. Don't resent it, anything. Because if you resent it, then it sticks in your craw and it becomes one of those unhappy memories that I was just talking about that will then color and influence your future and will prevent you from finding yourself. It's very important. Don't resent it. Don't resent any of it. Okay? Don't resent it. That's a very important. If there's injustice going on, if there's pettiness, if there's gossiping, if there's unfairness, any of it, just see it. Okay, if it's there, see it. But don't resent it. It's that simple. And don't resent the people. Now, um, talking about faith. Okay, so here's, a, here's one little story. St. Augustine. St. Augustine, a very nice man actually. And he said that when he re when he reads Moses, you know, the like uh, um, the beginning of the Bible, Genesis and so on, when he reads what Moses wrote, he knows that it's true. In other words, Augustine knows in his heart that, it, that it's true. But then he said, H how did Moses, how did Moses know what he was writing? Well, he was obviously inspired. Moses was inspired. Okay, so Moses wrote down what he was inspired to write. Okay, but now the question comes up. First of all, how did Moses know that it was true? Well, he just knew that it was true. Okay, and he wrote what he, what he knew. But then Augustine said, how do I know this is true? How do I know that what Moses is right, wrote is inspired? See, how do I know? That what Moses wrote is inspired. And Augustine said it's because I can see that it is. I just know it. I just see it. Okay? I don't have to analyze it. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to try to figure it out. Nobody told me. Or if they did tell me, I also see it. Despite, even though they told me, I still would have seen it anyway. Okay? So Moses, uh, so Augustine is basically, <laughs> it's the same light in which Moses wrote is the same light in which Augustine sees that what Moses wrote is true. This, that same light. So now we could bring it up to date and say, some of you, when you read my books, or you hear me on the radio, or you watch my videos, especially about things that hit really close to home, when I'm talking about relationships, about parents, okay? And about um, uh, about marriage, about relationships with your partner, okay, men, women. When I talk about those things, you can see that what I'm saying is true. You see it, okay. Well, the question is, how do you how do you know that what I'm saying is true, or right, or on the mark? How do you know it? Because the same light that is in me, by which I see these things, the same light is in you. The same light is in you. Your problem is 
that you doubt that you've always doubted it. See, you doubted it. See, the the world doesn't want you to know, doesn't want you to trust in your own self. If you if you did, why? First of all, you wouldn't have any problems. They would have never become big problems. Secondly, you'd have been your own person. You would have figured, you'd have understood things. You wouldn't have needed all their services. See, a lot of people make a lot of money providing answers to self-doubters, <laughs> okay? And then the self-doubters, following the advice of those who they listen to, then get into a big mess and things get worse, see? And then other experts come along to solve, to claim to solve those problems which for which they may also make a lot of money, see? So it's, it's to the advantage of those who want money and power and influence lorded over you with knowledge, see? It's to their advantage for you not to be self-composed and centered and, and, and walking in the light, like Moses, like Noah, like um, David, see? Um, Paul, okay? And to um, a greater or lesser extent other people along the way. I'm not going to start, start listing them. And then people that you don't even know about. See, you, you go out in the world, most people are confused. People say, I'm confused. Okay? Or they're upset. Or they got issues. They're all caught up in their issues. Worried about this. Troubled about that. So they're all caught up in all the little minutiae, minutiae, details. They never see the big picture. They don't know where to look for answers. But there are some people out there which you may not, which you wouldn't know. They go about their business quietly. And they're, and they're close to the light. They're close to the light from God, so they don't doubt themselves. See? Your problem is you doubted yourself. So you listen to other people. You put, you put great stock in what others said, teachers, professors, experts. See, You listen more to what they said than what you knew in your heart. If you'd listened to what you knew in your heart, you would have become an Albert Einstein. See, Or a Susan B. Anthony. Or a Ruth. Or Paul, or John, or a Beethoven, Mozart. See, but instead you doubted yourself. See, and because you doubted yourself, well, you you didn't have a lot of self confidence, so you had to compensate. See, which they all out in the world they make a lot of money too from the people that want to compensate with knowledge, degrees. See, so education is big business. So you did, you went that route, okay? So you need to come back to, to ref, so you have to refine your intuition from God. See, so it's really very simple. For example, if I say to you one plus one equals two, okay? How do you know that one plus one equals two? Because you can see it for yourself, you see it. If I say to you, okay, 1001 plus one, what is that? You say 1002, you see it, okay, it's truth. You know what they say, the truth is self-evident? You just see it. And once upon a time when you were a little kid, of course, they somebody told you one plus one equals two, and they made you memorize it and write it down, but you also saw it. Okay? Now, so that's your intuition. See? If you, if you always trusted in that, then not only would it, it be a lamp unto your feet, not only would it be a protection, not only would it help you to, to, to avoid danger, and would it help you to, to uh, see, see deceit and not get involved, but, see, it could also lead to great inspiration like Albert Einstein, for example, had, or Augustine, or Moses, see? Now, let me continue with this theme. It's very important because if you can see it, you say, oh, I get it. I see the penny drops. I understand. Oh, I get it. See, the eureka moment, the aha experience. That's what you need because getting it is a part of, a part of um, salvation. So you need to be saved from what? From doubting yourself. Saved from the, from the experts who mislead you. Saved from making the wrong moves with the wrong timing, 
based on what someone else said. See, you need to be saved from all that stuff. And part of it is 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 getting it, okay? Because God, God wants us to also see. See, He wants us to understand. That's His gift. That's why He gives us intuition, what we know in our heart, wordlessly. See. So, continuing with this theme, which is very simple, and I've said this thousands of times. I, incidentally, I wrote a book about intuition. Would you Would you like to know about it? It's called A Weekend with Einstein and Augustine. A Weekend with Einstein and Augustine. Imagine a seminar. Imagine a seminar that's announced that you can go for a, and spend a weekend with Albert Einstein and uh, um, St. Augustine. See, wouldn't that be... So it's co-taught. They are the leaders of the seminar. Can you imagine what a dynamic seminar that would be? So you'd go to the, to the hotel and enter the conference room and there would be a lot of people there, a big audience, and there would come Albert Einstein and St. Augustine to open up the uh, meeting. And then you'd spend the whole weekend. You'd have breakout groups You'd have uh, meetings, seminars, workshops. Can you imagine how wonderful? Well, that's kind of what the book is like. So um, Einstein, Albert Einstein, he used his intuition. That's where his insights came from. His discoveries came from intuition. His imagination then was a, a tool that he used, see. It, and he said himself that intuition is the thing. His imagination was when he when he made um, when he imagined uh, um, situations. I forget the name what they call them, but he did, he would imagine you know somebody in an elevator or somebody riding along with a with a light beam, you know that sort of thing. So he pick, he used those pictures to help him um, to think about what he had realized. In his imagine, from his um, intuition. See what I mean? But the intuition is the thing. So continuing with this. So anyway, you should get that book. You really should. Now um, I was saying uh, that continuing with this idea, you can teach a parrot to say one plus one equals two. Okay. So the parrot will say one plus one equals two. One plus one equals two. Okay. But the parrot, and you can train, you can teach a horse to, if you say one plus one, and the horse, you know, moves its foot twice, you know, that sort of thing. But the parrot cannot see that one plus one equals two. But a little child can. The little child can see that one plus one equals two. See how that works? So uh, another uh, thing along this same theme would be, so if somebody says, how do you know the Bible is true? How do you, you know... About Jesus and all these things, how do you know that it's true? And then most people will say, well, my Sunday school teacher told me, or the minister told me, or I read a book and it said it, or I went to school, or I took a class, or see? But you know how I know? Because I see that it's true. I see it. Nobody has to teach me. I just see it. It's a blessing. See, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It takes away all the doubt and the confusion. But then if something is not so, then I see that it's not so. And some things I don't know. See, I've learned to wait upon my intuition, from, my, from inspiration from God, enlightenment, realizations. Okay, so one plus one is kind of a basic realization. And it's also called common sense. Common sense is basic. Basically, seeing what in the light, okay? But then there are some things that I don't know. I would like to know, but I don't. So I wait. Sometimes years, decades. There are some. There, I can. I know. I can think of. I can't think of it right now. But there have been things that I haven't. That I would like. Would have liked to know, for like twenty or twenty-five years, and I just didn't. So I just waited. I just realized I didn't know, and I waited until one day I did know. And if God never deemed that it would be good for me to know, then I'll never know. So be it. I know a lot of other things. They're cool. Okay. So I think I'm going to stop at this point. I don't want to go too long. I just want you to know that uh, your intuition is very important. Learn to trust it. 
Don't doubt it. Okay? Don't doubt it. Now, there will still be doubt thoughts. See? How many, how many men, for example, have thought, well, I'm going to start a business. Okay? And then everybody said, no, you can't, you can't, you can't. It's no good. It's not a good idea. There's no security, in, especially his wife. See? Oh, no, you can't. Why, John down the street, why, he, he works for the ABC company and he has a pension and he has full health benefits and dental and he gets two weeks vacation and he has seniority. And so she will argue strongly against your starting your own business. Now, of course, some people start their own business on a goofy idea. But if you see, if you see that that's what it, you should do, then you should do it. See? You should do it. Well, anyway, um, yes, so the book is very good. Einstein, a Weekend with Einstein and Augustine. You can get it from, you can get a PDF of it from me by email. All you do is go to my website, SheddingShackles.com or um, CommonSenseCounseling.org and then look for the, uh, up in the right hand corner, the offer, a free ebook offer. And there, you, by using PayPal, you can make a small donation and then I will send you P uh, uh, the ebook by email. Okay? Or you can go to Amazon. Go to Amazon. It's in Kindle. It's in paperback and it's also in Kindle. Be, be a good read for you if you have any interest in this topic or if you're a self-doubter and you'd like to learn about how to have confidence. Learn from Augustine and, and Albert Einstein. My name is Roland.